Hi there, this is Erez with ZSA and today I want to take you on a tour of the Half Moon's default layout. You can step through this tour by yourself by going to Oryx and hitting play layout tour but I'm going to record a video of it just to kind of share a little bit and a few thoughts around the layout. So let's get started. Welcome to the Half Moon's default layout. The most important thing I want you to remember about this is we're not expecting you to use this layout in real life. This layout is really more of a demo of what the half moon can do. It has four layers. You have your layer zero, which is a numpad, a Photoshop layer, a Figma layer, and a Premiere layer. And they're all for Windows. So if you happen to be a Windows user and you spend all of your day in those three apps, this layout is perfect for you. Realistically speaking, it's not going to be you, right? So out of the box, the half moon is not gonna work for your particular workflow. Its power is more in being customizable. So let's see how the layout works and how you can customize it. First, we start layer zero, which is what is active when you plug the keyboard in. There's an numpad on this layer and having a numpad on the left might be a weird choice but we made it like that so that you can have keys that you can instantly hit when you plug the board in just as a sanity check to make sure it actually works then along the left here we have a bunch of keys that control the leds on the board you can switch through several colors you can start animations pause animations and so on over here is a couple more LED controls. And here we have media controls. You can play, mute, go back, go forward, like next track, previous track. And over here is the volume down and volume up. And I'm kind of considering that still part of the thumb cluster because it's really easy to hit those two keys with your thumb, assuming your fingers are on the home row. Now, like I said in the beginning, we also have three application specific layers within this layout. And you can switch through those layers using these three keys in the default layout. So let's go to Photoshop first. In Photoshop, I'm not gonna work through each and every key because the point here is not Photoshop, rather what you can do with the keyboard. So let's talk about that. First thing I want you to see is that you can assign icons to keys or rather mark a key with an icon. It's not assigning because you would be assigning a keystroke, but then if you want to quickly reference what the key does, most likely there is an icon for that particular feature, in this case an eyedropper. The next thing I want you to know is that it's really easy to create shortcut keys. So if you have a keystroke like Control X or Control S for saving, it's very easy to make one key that sends that keystroke. The way you do that is you think about the printable character first, in this case X, you send an X, and then you add the Control or the Shift or even multiple modifiers onto that X. Another important feature is multi-function keys. In this case, we have a single key that does select all and deselect in one key. You tap it to select all and you tap tap to deselect. This is really powerful and easy to remember. Next, when you're done with the Photoshop layer, you're gonna hit this key over here to go back to layer zero. And this key, we kept it consistent across all layers in this layout. So you can always hit this key like an escape hatch and find yourself back in layer zero. Now we can take a look at the Figma layer. Again, we're not gonna go through every key there. I'm actually gonna use the Figma layer as kind of a showcase for two different ways to think about numbers. So here we are, and this key is one key that gives you either a one or a two, because we don't have 10 keys in this case to dedicate to numbers. So if you tap it, you're gonna get a one. If you hold it down for a moment, you'll get Two. There's another way to think about number keys, and we did that in the Photoshop layer. So over here in the Photoshop layer, instead of holding, it's a double tap, and instead of one, two, three, four, it's rather one, six, two, seven, three, eight. 
So just a different way of thinking about that. Now, going back to Figma, there is one more thing I want to show you here. And that is that you don't have to use an icon. You can just label a key with text. In this case, it's undo slash redo, another dual function key. When you tap for undo and double tap to redo, but more to the point here is we didn't use an icon. You can just use text if that works for you. Now we're back in layer zero and this is kind of a funny one. It's a blank key. Why would we have a blank key and why do I want to include that in the tour? That's because it is so important to remember you don't have to assign every key on your half moon. Some keys are awkward to reach maybe given your own hand size or shape or the spot you picked for the half moon on your desk. So whichever key you can't easily reach, just don't use it because you can do so many things with so few keys, you can really be picky here. Finally, we have the reset key. This is a bit of a double-edged sword. Now, if you just hit this key randomly as you're working, you will feel like you just killed your board. Nothing will work anymore. You're going to mash keys. Nothing's going to happen. The only way to fix that is unplug the board and plug it back in. So why is that? That's because when you hit this key, the keyboard goes into its bootloader, which allows you to flash new firmware. So we wanted it really prominent here because we expect you to customize, 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 and run through this very intense period of flashing new layouts on the board as you figure out what you want to be doing with it. But eventually, you'll probably taper off and you'll find that you don't need to flash quite so often. And at that time, you can just move this key to another layer or get rid of it altogether because you can always use just a paper clip to flash your uh, keyboard. Of course, if you find yourself hitting it by mistake and just killing your keyboard again and again as you're working, just reassign it or get rid of it. And that's it. That's the tour. The bottom line here is, again, you want to change this layout. This is not how you should be using the half moon. This is just one idea because the whole point of the half moon is how customizable it is. Use layers. They help. They help you reason about your layout. They help you kind of compartmentalize into different applications. And within a layer, you want to be using multifunction keys. Don't use every key. And remember where the reset button is. The last thing I kind of touch on here is live training. This is a really powerful browser-based way to master your layout. Once you take some time to figure out where you want to put the various keys that are useful to you, then there's the matter of actually remembering where those keys are. This is where live training comes in because it's a really dedicated way to train, train, train on your layout and build muscle memory around your specific use case and key assignments. And last but not least, you can always email us. It's contact at zsa.io. We would love to help you, whether you already have a half moon or maybe if you're thinking about getting one, just talk to us. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.